Peace and love, black families, the prince of Pan-Africanism, Dr. Umar Johnson, King Kong Consciousness, live in Violin, New Jersey. I'm here to marry two good friends of mine today on their wedding day. I'm excited about it. All right. My first wedding ceremony, my first marriage ceremony. Very much looking forward to a shout out to Jersey. I am here, the state where I completed my pre-doctoral uh, psychology internship. And tomorrow is the big day, home in Philadelphia. Everyone is invited to Prince of Pan-Africanism. will be speaking in his hometown neighborhood of North Philadelphia for the first time since his rise to prominence within the black consciousness movement. The lecture tomorrow in Philadelphia will take place at the Garden of Prayer World's Prayer Center, 2217 North 29th Street. I repeat, that's tomorrow, Sunday, June the 30th, 2217 North 29th Street. That's on 29th Street between Susquehanna Avenue and Dolphin Street between Susquehanna Avenue and Dolphin Street. The doors open up at 3 p.m. The message will begin approximately 4 p.m. I will go until approximately 6.30 p.m., after which there will be a question and answer session, followed by a book signing and picture taking session. I'd have been all around the world, every continent, most countries, almost every state, only to return home to North Philly. So I'm looking forward to it. Come on out tomorrow, Jersey, Maryland, D.C., New York, Connecticut, and of course, Pennsylvania. All children are free 17 and under. All elders are free 65 and older. Everyone else, it's a $20 donation. You can make that donation online, drumarjohnson.com, or you can make that donation at the door. It's $20 either way. The price will not change. So I'm just here chilling before I start getting ready for the wedding today. If anybody has a question, you could tap on in. If you have a question, you could tap on in. Go ahead and tap in. Who tapping in this morning? Let me see somebody. Where the brothers at? Where the queens at? Tap on in this morning. Dark skin, dark skin God going once. What up, black man? Hey, yo, peace, God. Peace, God. Where you at in the world? I'm in New York, New York City, Queens. Queens, New York. I'm probably going to be, well, I'm going to be in Hempstead, Long Island, next okay. Sunday, July the 14th. Sunday, July the 14th, Hempstead, Long Island, Morris okay. Park. Morris Park. Are you familiar? Um, not really, but I could find out where it's at. Yes, sir. July the 14th, Morris Park, 3 o'clock. I'm there. It's a Sunday. What's on your mind today, black man? All right, brother. There's a few questions I got for you, man. Um, sure. First of all, brother, I want to say thank you, man, because you're a big inspiration to me, man. Um, I remember you were speaking about a black man's circle. I just want to know when you're going to do that. Yes, sir. In fact, I'm speaking tomorrow in Philadelphia, and the pastor of the church in Philadelphia, I'm going to be speaking with him okay. about hosting a series of black male town hall meetings at that very church in North Philly. Okay. So I should have that information, black man, coming out within the next month. Okay. I go to Africa, I leave for Ghana on July the 25th, so I'm, I, I plan to have those dates for you by July the 25th. Okay. Also, that's another question. Um, are you doing any tours with this Africa thing? Because I've been trying to go. I want to do a few tours. I want to see okay. some places. Um, I actually did that uh, uh, African accessory test, and it comes back from um, my roots is down in Cameroon. So that's okay. also one of the places I want to go to, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, the trip that we take in the Ghana on the 25th, uh, if you're interested, you can still get in on that. You can still get in on that. Uh, you would have to make the payment in full, but it's not too late. Okay. Uh, next year, I think I'm going to do Egypt and Ethiopia again. I enjoyed it so much last year, Kim okay. in Ethiopia, that I think I'm going to do Egypt and Ethiopia again next year. But um, you have my number? 
No, sir. Take the cell number. Okay. And then I want you to uh, text me so I can lock you in and keep you posted on the information and the, the upcoming events. Let me know when you're ready. All right, I'm ready. Uh, ahead, 215. Okay. Uh, 215. All right. 989. 9858. Okay. okay. Read that back. 215. 919. What's the last one? 989. 989. Nine eight nine. Okay. The last four. Nine eight five eight. All right. Two one five nine eight nine nine eight five eight. Yes, sir. Shoot me All a right. text. I'm gonna lock you in. I'm gonna hit you with the Hempstead flyer, and I'm gonna hit okay. you with the Black Men Town Hall meeting as well. Okay. Also, my last question for you, brother. Um. I wanted to do a program for young kids, especially in Queens. Um, I'm out here in Far Rockaway. Okay. And there's, there's young brothers that's like 10, 11, 12 that have never even left the city or the borough of Queens, never been to Manhattan. They haven't been nowhere. And it, it's sad. They have no programs out here in the summertime. And it's just they're going around shooting each other. It's just a lot of crazy shit happening. So Let me ask you a question. Go. Let me ask you a question, not to cut you off. Okay. Are you able, are you able to get somebody to let us either borrow an 18 passenger van or donate for two days a school bus or regular coach bus? If you can get somebody that'll say, okay. listen, for the children, I'm going to give y'all two days. I'm going to drive y'all around any way y'all want to go on a school bus or a coach bus, or if they got an 18 passenger van, I could drive it myself. But I'm saying that to say that I want you to round up a group of those young young men and women, sound like you were saying 10 to 13, somewhere within there. And I want to take them on a college and black history tour. So I want to take them to the Ferncliff Cemetery, Harriet Tubman House, Fred Douglas, take them down to the Blacks and Wax in Maryland. See if you can arrange for us to get some transportation for two days. I'm not charging for my service. I'm doing it free. I'm going to okay. do a tour for them. All you got to do is get the means of the transportation. All right. All right. I could give you a text, man, but I, okay. I think this is something, man, because these kids is lost and it's sad. They won't do nothing. They won't They won't do nothing. They build a YMCA out here, and that's about it, and they charge mad bread for that. And yeah. half of these kids can't even do it, and it's sad. Like. Right, I feel. No, I just want to, yeah, man. So speak to I, some I, of them I, churches out there and see if they'll let us use their van, or if you know they'll uh, a lot if they'll donate, you know, the bus for a day or two. Tell them we only need it for two two days, you know what I mean? But we trying to do a free tour for the young folks, expose them to some colleges and some Black history, and see what they say. Okay. All right, brother, man, I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Keep me posted. Hit me with that text, bro. All right, peace. All right, now, Black Power. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Make sure y'all get them donations in. Please get your donations in. Please get your donations in. Cash.me slash dollar sign FDMG school. Cash.me slash dollar sign FDMG school. Cash.me slash dollar sign FDMG school. Or mail your check of money order payable to the FDMG Academy, P.O. Box 9634, Wilmington, Delaware. FDMG Academy, P.O. Box 9634, Wilmington, Delaware, 19809. If you need to hit me up, 215-989-9858, 215-989-9858. Nine eight five eight. Somebody tap in. Who next? Jamaican Thickums. You sent it to the wrong cash app, Jamaican Thickums. It's cash doc. There you go. Tay Nasty. Tay Nasty got the right link. 
All right. Sunday in Philly is going down. Sunday in Philly. All right. Miss Premium going once. Miss Premium going twice. Miss Premium going three times. I think Miss Premium must have tapped on out. I don't see Miss Premium in the game no more, so I'm going to cancel that one out. Go ahead and tap in if you need to tap in. <laughs> he said Jamaican Pickums hit me up. Oh, man, y'all be tripping. Y'all be tripping. Y'all be tripping. California, I'm looking for a venue in Oakland and Sacramento. Mocha do more going once. Mocha do more going twice. Mocha do more. Where you at, Sister Mocha? All right, she got scared. The moment was too big for my good sister Mocha do more. All right, who else tapping in? Connecticut, you could come to Hempstead, Long Island. Sunday, July 14th, Hempstead, Long Island, Sunday, July 14th. You look a mess? Amby Gurley going once. Amby Gurley going twice. Hey, How you I doing, sister? Don't Peace and love. Me. Where you at in the world? Baltimore, Maryland. Park Baltimore, Park. Maryland. You might as well drive up for the Philly event tomorrow. <laughs> Baltimore, Maryland in the building. Dr. Umar, it's Peace nice to talk you. to you. The honor's all mine. What's going on with you? Um, I just want to mention um, right now, you know what's going on in BMO with a lot of killings. And um, mm -hmm. it's just, I joined the board at my daughter's school, uh, okay. which is Creative City. And um, I just wanted to, I actually got elected. I wanted to get a, a couple of pointers and advice about what I could mention because it's a diverse community and they don't even know what a squeegee boy is. And they, they're not really, they're not really in tune with the neighborhood. Like, meaning school would let out and it'd be a shooting up the street and they would just get in their cars and continue their life. And to bring awareness, I want to be able to be that voice in that board meeting. I want to be able to bring, you know, culture into the curriculum. I want to be, be able to bring that nurturing and everything back into the curriculum. So what pointers could you actually give me when I'm being that voice so I'm not as aggressive and I'm, I'm getting my point across? I'm not bringing up irrelevant topics. Okay. This school, is this a public school, charter school, private school, preschool? What is it's it? A, it's a charter school. What grades is the charter school? From K to fifth grade. K to five. And your child is in what grade at the school? She is um, in the kindergarten going into the first grade. Kindergarten going into the first grade. Okay, a couple things. Number one, literacy program. You want to start as many literacy programs as possible because that's how we keep them out of special ed and that's how we keep them out of prison. So y'all might want to start a, uh, a reading. Uh, remember back in the day, Pizza Hut used to have that program where you read a certain amount of books, you come to Pizza Hut, you get the free <laughs> pizza, McDonald's have them. You, you want to start something like that. But you know what I mean? Different types of reading programs. You know, they might get a free trip, a free dinner, free movie, but as many different reading programs, we got to get the literacy together. The literacy is what's killing our children. So start a, 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 a reading program with some sort of reward in it, incentive. You want to do the same thing for mathematics. We want to mm -hmm. make learning fun by providing the incentives for the learning. So you so, want to do that. I'm sorry to cut you off. Um, just to give you a knowledge of how they're teaching our children, because I'm an active parent and I worked there for the last three weeks. And what they're doing with the kids in the charter schools are they're putting these computers in front of these kids and they're doing these apps like Zern and the teachers 
are using this as the curriculum and there's no interactive nurturing going on and I'll be able to state this in the meetings that we need hands on. My daughter is left-handed, you know, things like that. And her teacher wasn't as nurturing. It was like she was in trouble while being taught. Thank you, baby. Oh, I need my glasses. She's telling me to put my glasses. <laughs> um, she was she was just not she wasn't nurturing and it was it was frustrating because I couldn't tell her not to teach like that. It's just I know how I want my child to be taught. And um, okay, Zern is a breakdown of different, somebody asked what Zern is, I'm reading the comment. So Zern is a computer program for mathematics and quote, just mathematics. And they basically give the children different um, games and word problems and math problems on how to break, break down basic math and they, they're teaching um, Common Core right now in Baltimore City. And they're switching a lot of the kids over to Common Core math, which I'm from, what, I was born in 1991. So I was taught differently. But, and then my education background is I went to public, charter, private. So I've gotten every type of education within the past 10, 20 years. So like... I get what you mean by bringing literacy, but I learned through music. I remember specifically, I learned fractions through eating, like things that interested me. Like my teacher, my math teacher broke down a Snicker bar and we was in there happy that we was gonna eat the Snicker bar yeah. because we can say one fourth was, you know, one fourth of the Snicker bar. So that's how we were actually excited about learning and they are taking yeah. the excitement I'll let me let me jump in on you, Queen. I think I just had a thought. I think you need to get with other parents in that school who have a problem with the over dependence on technology for teaching. Because to be honest, what's happening right now is they are using the computers to babysit the children. They are using the computers to babysit the children, but it's being disguised as instruction is being disguised as computer-based learning. But what it really is, is busy work. They're using the computers to babysit the children. So you need to link up with some other parents and y'all need to request a meeting, a meeting with the charter school board of directors. Every okay. charter school has a board of directors that governs the charter school. They approve the curriculum they approve the policy, just like with the regular public school. Just So y'all want to request a meeting with the charter school board of directors and express your concerns about how you feel that technology is being overly depended upon and is simply being used as a babysitter for the children in the class so the teachers don't have to use their, use their uh, so teachers don't have to do their job. In other words, they're using the programs, you understand, to replace the teacher. So if the, if the computer is going to teach the child, what do you need a teacher for? So y'all yeah. want to tell them that y'all want to get back to some organic education, old school, organic, traditional learning experiences. Children learn from people. They don't learn from computers. So y'all need to express that because this is a new wave, by the way. They're basically trying to turn the school into a fast food restaurant. They're trying to turn the school into a fast food restaurant. So just like you got fast food uh, meals, they want to have a fast food education. That's what this is. It's a fast food education, drive-through, drive-through window education. This is what they're doing. We got to get back to organic learning. But let me do this, organic. Queen. I got a few more folks, so I'm going to tap out. But do you have my number to stay in touch with me? It, it was the 215. I'll go back. Yes, it was the 215. Thank you so much, Dr. All right, Queen. I really Stay in appreciate touch. talking to you. Will do. One love. All right. Yes, indeed, family. That's why at the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy, at the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy, we will be old school throwback.
Yes, we will have computers. Yes, we will use computers, but we will be old school throwback, Booker T. Washington, Mary McLeod Bethune, George Washington Carver, Carter G. Woodson type education. That's how we wrote it. Also, I'm trying to get August 17th, the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey's birthday to be the first annual FDMG African Family First Block Party. August the 17th. It's a Saturday, Garvey birthday. I want to have a block party in front of the FDMG Academy. I will keep y'all posted. If we get approved for the block party, I want all y'all to come. California, Chicago, Detroit, Texas, Milwaukee, South Dakota, Carolinas, Georgia, D.C., Virginia, PA, Canada, London, Jamaica, South Africa. It'll be your opportunity to come and see the school that we purchased. Not that I purchased, but that we purchased because I would have never got it done without all of you. I would have never got it done without all of you. So we're working on August the 17th for the Marcus Garvey birthday block party at the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. Some of y'all want to send books and school supplies. It ain't time yet. It's coming, but it ain't time yet. We want to get the Marcus Garvey building renovated. Once we got the building renovated, that's when you'll be able to start sending in your supplies and books. And I'm also going to start an FDMG school registry. I'm going to start an FDMG school registry. I'm going to start a FDMG school registry where you can purchase all 90 copies of Frederick Douglass' Narrative of the Life. You can purchase all 90 copies of Marcus Garvey Philosophy and Opinion. You can purchase a chair that's going to go in one of the classrooms on which our children will sit. You can purchase a laptop computer. You understand? You can purchase the different items. So there's going to be a massive registry, FDMG school registry, so you will be able to purchase the supplies and you will know what you have. <laughs> Jam Would y'all leave Jamaican Thickums? Brother, stop hitting up on my sister Jamaican Thickums. Jamaican Thickum says she ain't trying to holler right now. She's tapping in to support her brother, Dr. Umar. She said, start using your mind above your waist instead of using your mind below your waist. Jamaican Thickums ain't hollering at nobody right now. Leave my sister, Jamaican Thickums, alone. She's just trying to support and get some knowledge. Brothers, every time we see a fine sister, we should not start tripping out. You feel me? Stop tripping out, brothers. Stop tripping out. All right, y'all got to stop tripping out every time. I'm about to go to a wedding today. You know, it ain't going to be nothing but fine women at the wedding today. Shout out to Jersey. I'm here. Vineland, New Jersey. You understand? It's going to be fine women, but I can't be tripping out. We got to get that chakra together, brother. Some of us, our lower chakras are out of sync. We have a dysfunctional lower chakra. Whenever all you thinking is coochie, 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 that's all that's on your mind all day long, that means your chakras is out of balance. You know, your root chakra. You got to get that root chakra together. Okay? Okay, you got to get that reproductive chakra together. You got to start operating up here with that crown chakra, that third eye chakra, that oratorical chakra, that communication chakra. We, and some women, too, you got a lot of sisters, they operating on the lower chakras, too. We got to raise the vibration. We got to raise the vibration. Who else tapping in? Who else tapping in? Get too much coochie on the brain. Who else tap, tapping in? Brother Quincy going once. Brother Quincy. Brother Quincy. Baby Zoe going once. Baby Zoe going twice. Baby Zoe going three times. There you go. Oh, 
My bad, baby Zoe. Tap back in. Tap back in, baby Zoe. I didn't think. Philly tomorrow, the address is 2217 North 29th Street. Tomorrow, Sunday. Tomorrow, Sunday, June 30th. The Prince of Pan-Africanism is taking over Philadelphia tomorrow, 4 p.m. The address is 2217 North 29th Street between Susquehanna and Dolphin. Between Susquehanna and Dolphin. 29th Street between Susquehanna and Dolphin. My man Bongo going to be out there with the drum. So all you got to do is listen for the drum. My man Bongo going to be out there with the drum. So listen for the drum. You feel me? Bring all the children absolutely free. I want to give a big hug to all my Philly queens. All my Philly queens. I want big hugs from all my Philly queens. And I'm going to give a fist bump to all my Philly kings. Fist bump for the kings. Big hugs for the queens. Fist bumps for the kings. Big hugs for the queens. That's how we roll it. That's how we roll it. AJ Brooklyn, where you at? Where AJ Brooklyn at? Where Brooklyn at? Where Brooklyn at? All right. All right. We had a cleanup day on Tuesday. Shout out to everybody who came out to the cleanup day at the Fred Douglas Marcus Garvey Academy. The sisters put in work. The brothers put in work. But the sisters, I had some sisters who worked from 10 in the morning to 6 o'clock. I had to literally pull them out of school. Black women represented at the cleanup day. Brothers did their thing too. Shout out to the brothers. But black women really represented at the cleanup day. They did their thing. There's going to be another cleanup day for the other school. There's going to be another cleanup day for the Frederick Douglass school. You feel me? There's going to be another cleanup day for the Frederick Douglass building. We cleaned out the Marcus Garvey building. Now we got to clean out the Frederick Douglass building. But the Queens really did their thing. And I hate to tell y'all this because I don't like to share bad news because there's enough negativity out there, but I'm going to let y'all know. I'm going to let y'all know. The haters on YouTube, Dr. Umar's haters, called the city of Wilmington, called the city of Wilmington, and they harassed license and inspection. They harassed the council people in the city, sent license and inspection out to the Honorable Frederick Douglass building this past Tuesday. Because somebody had told them that we were conducting construction work on the school without the appropriate license or permit. So L and I came and confronted me on cleanup day because they had got phone calls from Dr. Umar's haters. Dr. Umar's haters tried to get the cleanup day shut down, brothers and sisters. Dr. Umar's haters tried to get the cleanup day shut down. License and inspection came out and confronted me, said that they had gotten phone calls that I was carrying out construction work without the appropriate license and permits. And I told the license and inspection that we are not doing any electrical work. We are not doing any plumbing. We are not doing any carpentry. We are not doing any roofing. We are simply cleaning up the building to make space for the contractor and the tradesmen and women to come in and do their job. All we're doing is moving furniture out the way, sweeping up debris and trash. All we're doing is moving furniture out the way, books, paperwork out the way, sweeping and cleaning so that the construction work can proceed on schedule. That's all we doing. That's all we doing. And them Negroes tried to get us shut down. Stop watching their videos. If y'all didn't watch them, they would stop making them. If y'all didn't watch them, they would stop making them. If y'all didn't watch them, they would stop making them. All right? 
who tapping in? Philadelphia, 4 o'clock tomorrow, 29th Street, between Susquehanna and Dolphin. We're going to talk about FDMG. FDMG. I'm going to be putting together FDMG Hospitality Committee. So whenever we have events, we have a hospitality committee. Okay? It's going to be strong, brothers and sisters. This is going to be the Luxor. This is going to be the Sphinx of the Black Conscious Movement. Two buildings, all the space we need, but we need donations, brothers and sisters. We need donations, brothers and sisters. We need donations, but please donate. Every time you get paid, donate. We need those donations. Okay? Verbal support is good. Spiritual support is great. But we need them donations, y'all. I want this school done. I want the Marcus Garvey building, the Honorable Marcus Garvey building, completed before it gets cold outside. I want it completed before it gets cold outside. Oklahoma City, I will see you October to November the 2nd. Oh, excuse me. Tulsa, Oklahoma, November the 2nd. Oklahoma City, November the 3rd. Tulsa, Oklahoma, November the 2nd. Oklahoma City, November the 3rd. Jacksonville, Florida, August the 30th. Jacksonville, Florida, August the 30th. Orlando, Florida, August the 31st. Orlando, Florida, August the 31st. Okay. Oh, Nashville, Tennessee, Saturday, September 2nd. We just got confirmed for Nashville. It is official. Nashville, Tennessee. Tennessee, mark your calendars. I've been to Tennessee in years. I'm coming back. Nashville, Tennessee, Saturday, September the 7th. It's going down. Brussels, Belgium, September the 28th. It's going down. Zambia, Africa, December. It's going down. Ghana, July 25th to August the 4th. We taking over Ghana. It ain't too late to go. If y'all still trying to go, it's going down. Who tapping in? Who tapping in? Who tapping in? <laughs> He said these haters are the descendants of the black slave traders. I like that. I like that. I'm going to use that, Brother Phil. Baltimore. Y'all need to come up to Philly. Y'all only 90 minutes away. Stop playing. Baltimore. Make that drive to Philly tomorrow. Stop playing. Maryland. Make that drive to Philly tomorrow. Stop playing. D.C. Make that drive to Philly tomorrow. Stop playing. New York. Make that drive to Philly tomorrow. Stop playing. All right? Who tapping in? Who tapping in? A few more tap-ins. Who tapping in? All right. So if if y'all need to reach me, Dr. Umar Johnson at Yahoo. Make sure y'all order y'all unapologetically African clothing. Dr. Umar Johnson.com. Make sure y'all order y'all unapologetically African clothing. Dr. Umar Johnson.com. If you live in, if you live in New York or New Jersey and you have a testimonial, if you live in New York or New Jersey and you have a testimonial, text me because I'm scheduling interviews for New York and New Jersey for the documentary of the decade. I am now scheduling interviews for New York and New Jersey for the documentary of the decade, the shockumentary, America's Psychoacademic Holocaust Against Black Boys. If you got a story to tell, black men, black parents, black professionals. If you got a story to tell, black men, black parents, black professionals. If you got a story to tell, black men, black parents, black professionals in New York or New Jersey, make sure y'all text me up, all right? All right, we hit up Philly last weekend. We're going to hit up Philly one more time. If you live in Philly and you got a testimonial, I got a few more interview slots. This documentary is going to be talked about for 100 years. We bring in the fire. No documentary you've seen is going to touch the shockumentary. Also, for my Philly cats, 
for my Philly cats and my New York cats. I need a couple of celebrity rappers to drop a 16 on a documentary. I need a couple celebrity hip hop artists to drop a nice 16 bars. I'm looking for a nice 16 bars on the documentary. Somebody tell Gilly the Kid to get at me. Somebody tell Beanie Siegel, get at me. Young Chris and Neef Buck, get at me. Oskino and Sparks, get at me. Reed Dollars, get at me. I need some of my Philly state property chain gang. I need y'all to compete crack, get at me. Freeway, get at me. I need a sweet 16. I need a sweet 16 about the school to prison pipeline for the documentary. I need a, I need a, I need a, uh, I need a 16 bars. All right. 16 bars. All right. Meek doing his thing right now. We're not going to bother Meek right now. He doing his thing, but I'm trying to get one of my Philly rappers that from my generation, you feel me? I'm trying to get some Philly rappers from now. New York. If y'all got it, I need some New York. I, I want Jada Kiss and Styles to drop a nice school to prison pipeline, 16 bars. Tell Jada Kiss and Styles P to get at me. I need a nice 16 for the shockumentary. You feel me? You feel me? I, I would love to get Big Daddy Kane and Rock him to drop a nice 16. I want Remy Ma, Remy Ma to drop a nice 16. Can I get a nice 16 from Remy Ma? All right. We need that for the shockumentary. Okay. Tell Free Wheezy to get at me. Tell Siegel to get at me. A nice 16. Method Man, I need Black Thought. That's a good point. I need Black Thought to do a nice 16. That's a good idea. I need to get up on the roots. That'd be nice for Black Thought. I want Talib Kweli to drop a nice 16 as well. Also, I'm working on the college tours. I'm working on four college tours. The information will be coming out next week. I'm working on four college tours. The information will be coming out next week. Okay. 13 to 18. 19 to 24. Age group. 13 to 18. 19 to 24. So I would have a college tour for the older students and a college tour for the younger students. College tour for the older students, college tour for the younger students. Okay? I'm working on the prices right now. Two nights, three days. Two nights, three days for the college tour. There will be a New York, Pennsylvania tour. There will be a Maryland, D.C. tour. And there will be a Virginia tour. There will be a New York, Pennsylvania tour. There will be a Maryland, D.C. tour. And there will be a Virginia tour. The fourth tour is Delaware and Far Eastern Shore of Maryland. The fourth tour will be Delaware and Far Eastern Shore of Maryland. All right. I wouldn't mind getting Funk Doc. Somebody get that red, man. Funk Doc. I need a 16 for the School to Prison Pipeline documentary. Who tapping in? Where's Shanae at? Going once. Shanae going twice. Shanae. The moment was too big for Shanae. Jazzy J going once. Jazzy J going twice. Jazzy J. What happened to Jazzy J? Jazzy J fell back. 
You can send your resumes to fdmgresumes at gmail. Send your resumes to fdmgresumes at gmail. I'm down here in uh, Vineland, New Jersey. I have a trivia question. Trivia question for the day. Why should you know Vineland, New Jersey? We're talking about the school to prison pipeline. We're talking about the shock documentary. We're talking about the psychoacademic Holocaust. My trivia question for today, if you answer this question correctly, you get a free book and you get a free unapologetically African t-shirt. If you answer this question, I will mail you out. I will ship you out first thing tomorrow morning, a free copy of my book and a free t-shirt. Okay. With regard to black psychology, with regard to eugenics, with regard to the school to prison pipeline, with regard to the psychoacademic Holocaust, what happened right here in Vineland, New Jersey? Why is Vineland, New Jersey significant for black people from an education, psychology, and eugenics perspective? Who can answer that question? Who can answer that question? Type your answer, and I'll let you know if you're correct. Then you'll text me, and I'll send you your book and T-shirt. I'll need your T-shirt size. I'll need your T-shirt size. I'm going to state the question one more time. Vineland, New Jersey. I did my internship in Trenton. I did my internship in Trenton, New Jersey. Vineland, New Jersey. Why is Vineland, New Jersey significant for black people from a mental health education and eugenic standpoint what why is violent new jersey important i'll tell you why because a white racist psychologist by the name of henry h goddard henry h goddard g-o-d-d-a-r-d he was the first white psychologist to go to france and bring back the benet simon intelligence scales so that IQ scores could be used as a weapon against black people. But he also worked at the Vineland School in New Jersey. And it was from here, Vineland, New Jersey, that Henry Goddard launched one of the most prolific and profound campaigns of pseudoscientific psychological racism. It was from right here in Vineland, New Jersey, where Henry H. Goddard, one of the fathers of racist psychology, launched one of the most profound and prolific pseudo-scientific psychology campaigns against black people in American history. That's the answer. That's the answer. That's the answer. I want another question. I'm going to give you another question. Dr. Umar Johnson started Team Pan-African, which is the IMI PAP, which is the International Movement for the Independence and Protection of African People. I started that organization on September the 21st, 2005 after I came back from Africa for the first time, September the 21st, 2005. My book, Psychoacademic Holocaust, was released on March the 6th, 2013. March the 6th, 2013, my book was released, Psychoacademic Holocaust. My organization was started September the 21st, 2005. Those two dates are extremely significant in the life of which Pan-Africanist? Which great Pan-Africanist? Which great Pan-Africanist also has September the 21st and March the 6th as significant dates in their career? My Ifa Tunde University students cannot answer this. My Ifa Tunde University students are not allowed to answer this. My Ifa Tunde University students are not allowed to answer this. Speaking of Ifa Tunde University, if any of you are interested in taking the next course, class number two, 
If any of you are interested in taking the next course, class number two, Black Psychology, War for the African Mind. Course number two, Black Psychology, War for the African Mind. If you're interested in taking the class, email me a one-page autobiographical letter of interest. If you want to take my next class, maximum of 40 students. If you want to take my next class, maximum of 40 students, Black Psychology, Introduction into the War for the African Mind, send me a one-page autobiographical email telling me why you want to take this class and who you are. We're going to read Amos Wilson. We're going to read Frantz Fanon. We're going to read and study Bobby Wright. We're going to read and study Queen Mother, psychiatrist, uh, Francis Cress Wilson. We're going to deal with the African psychologist. Oh, yes. We're even going to deal with some of the European psychologists. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Wade Nobles, who's still with us. Naeem Akbar, who's still with us. Thomas Parham, who's still with us. The Prince of Pan-Africanism, who's still with us. If you want to take the class, deadline is August 1st. Deadline is August 1st. Deadline is August 1st. You must email one page letter of interest to Dr. Umar Johnson at yahoo.com. If you want to become a master of black psychology, you must be at least 18 years old to take the class. You must be at least 18 years old to take the class. If you want to become a master of black psychology, take the next class. We meet one day a month for 12 months, one Saturday per month for 12 months, one Saturday per month for 12 months, one Saturday per month for 12 months. Black Psychology Class Number Two. We're finishing up Introduction to Revolutionary Pan Africanism, Garveyism. Class Number One is almost done. We started in September and we're about to finish in August. Class Number Two will start in September and it will end in August. If you want to take the class, if you want to take the class, it's a traveling class. We go around to different significant locations of the black experience. We will visit Nat Turner land. We will visit Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass. We will visit different places. If you're interested, no, that's the wrong. It's FDMG school, dollar sign FDMG school. Let me type it in. Some of y'all never donated. That's why you're getting it wrong. Cash.me slash dollar sign FDMG school, right? Cash dot me slash dollar sign FDMG school. If you want to donate to the college tour or the shockumentary, college tour or the shockumentary, cash dot me slash dollar sign Dr. Umar Johnson. Shockumentary or college tour, cash dot me slash dollar sign. Dr. Umar Johnson. Okay. If you need to reach me, text me at 215-989-9858. If you need to reach me, 215-989-9858. If you want to send in a resume to work at the school, fdmgresumes at gmail.com. Resume to work at the school, FDMG resumes at gmail.com. You want to send in a letter to take the black psychology class, one page autobiographical letter of interest, Dr. Umar Johnson at yahoo.com. That's Dr. Umar Johnson at yahoo.com. Dot com. Okay, wifey resumes. Dr. Umar Johnson at yahoo.com. Okay, who tapping that? Sweet candy yams going once. Sweet candy yams going twice. 
sweet candy yams. Where's sweet candy yams at? Sweet candy yams. Some of these names is a bit exotic, a bit provocative. Sweet candy yams, Jamaican thickums. Where y'all getting these names from? Where y'all getting these names from? I just got some donations, shout out. Oh, thank you for the shockumentary donations, brothers and sisters. That's how I've been paying for the hotel rooms for my film crew. That's how I've been paying for the meals, the gas. Thank you so much for the shockumentary donations, brothers and sisters. Because you know when we film, we normally film for two days. So I gotta put the brothers up in a hotel room. So make sure y'all donate to the shockumentary. Cash.me slash dollar sign Dr. Umar Johnson. Cash.me slash dollar sign. Dr. Umar Johnson. Who tapping in? Let's see who tapping in. Where Toby at? My name, oh, T dot, T dot, T dot, where you at? T dot going once. Where T dot, brother T dot, where, where you at? Where you at, T dot? Where brother, where brother T dot at? You inside of a jail cell? Where you at, T dot? I'm going to tap out on T dot because he's not showing himself. We had to tap out on T dot. He gave us the ceiling. He might have had to take a phone call. Who tapping in? Where T dot? Sister Carol, where's Sister Carol at? Sister Carol going once. Sister Carol going twice. Sister Carol is, she tapped out. Who else we got? Who tapping in next? Baby Zoe, I got to get you back on, Baby Zoe. I got you. Let me see what I can do. Flint, I'm trying to get up to Flint. I'm trying to get back to Flint. Sisto 206. Sisto 206. How you doing there, goddess? Good. How are you? All is well. All is well. Where you at in the world? Seattle, Washington. Seattle, Washington. What's going on in Seattle, Queen? Oh, man. It's gorgeous out today. It's nice. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And let me ask you a question. Don't take offense to my question, though. That's uh, awesome. Because I come from a very fair-skinned paternal family yeah and so i see your fair skin and it looked like you could be european but it looked like you could be mixed race african tell me about your ethnicity queen so i'm mexican italian third generation of mexican okay mexican My, italian not an african i got you not an african what now what would have a mexican italian woman tap into the dr umar live on instagram tell me about that well, I saw an interview with you a couple of months ago um, promoting black businesses, black everything. Yes. And I really, and I, uh, I, um, it really resonated with me because the same thing with Mexicans too, because, you know, in the United States, Mexicans, we have it a hard time. And it was always, when I grew up, it was always in my hood, it was always Mexican, black, Mexican, black, Mexican, black. I okay. grew up in San Diego. So I grew up in San Diego. And okay. um, so it just really resonated with me what you said. I, I, okay. I understand the struggle. I understand, you know, the... the, now, the now let me ask you this. Being Mexican, being Italian, Italian is obviously European. How yeah. do you navigate that? Because, you know, there's a That's lot of white people who take issue with the Mexican presence in America. So <laughs> yeah. how do you navigate that Italian Mexican diet? Well, um, one, try to stay positive. Two, stay on my mission, which is uh, I'm not going to tell you what I do. I'm I'm a I work with uh, special needs children. Okay. So I stay on my mission, um, and I just try to promote 
I try to promote that goodness. I mean, it's really hard. I mean, when I had uh, when I had a, a child, uh, I got mistaken for the nanny twice. Okay. And so the first time, the first time, um, I was really upset about it. And the mm -hmm. second time, I just laughed about it because it was just so stupid. Okay. So I, you know, I, I went from like being hurt and and uh, offended to just being able to like, okay, that's not my problem. That's that's your guys' problem. Okay. Now so, let me ask you this. No, finish that. Yeah. Finish that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to ask you on the Italian side. Italians yeah. can be very racist towards African Americans. Yeah. For you as a liberal, how do you work within your culture, the Italian culture, to try to dismantle the mindset, the opinions? How do you push back against the racism in the Italian community when black people are not around? And the reason I ask you that right. is because with a lot of liberals, they will claim to be supporters of the cause, but at the same right. time, they don't do anything within their culture to try to destroy the systems of racism that exist. What do you do within your Italian culture to try to disrupt right. the systems of racism and attitude towards black people? Right. Okay, so I used to live in Italy for three years. I went to school over there. And there were a lot of African um, immigrants coming in and, uh, I saw the racism 100%. Um, so the only thing that I could do is to be kind, you know, okay. and, and uh, right in Seattle, we're so diverse that you don't really see a lot of racism toward the Italian community. Okay. Well, I was speaking from the Italian community. Oh, from, from the, the Italian, Italian community? I don't racism. see much, really. Go ahead. Really, I don't see much. Okay, I don't see don't much. See um, much. Okay. Mm -mm. It's mostly okay. from, um, sorry, white people. Okay, so you don't consider Italian to be white? No. Why don't you consider Italian to be white? Because they're Italian. They're not. Italian is a nationality, not a race, though. So what race would the Italian people belong to? race it would definitely have to be the european race which would make them white although well you're well do. not really because europe is europe is is you know french portuguese spain they're not white but there's not a big well spain and italy have a as you know a historic relationship yeah they sure. share many of the same ancestors. So if Spain is white, why wouldn't Italy also be white? Well, I'm not really sure where the origins of, of the Italians came from. Mm -hmm. But I don't, just because the color of their skin doesn't make them white. Just because... I partly agree with you, and I'll tell you why. Italians, Jews, and Irish in America were not legally classified as white until 1940. It was in <laughs> 1940 where they became members of the Anglo-Saxon community. Prior to that, they were excluded. So there was right. racism against Jew, racism against Irish, racism against Italian. Right. They're considered white now for political purposes, but historically in America, they were marginalized, never as poorly treated as black people. So I, I want to make sure I'm clear that I'm not saying that they ever experienced what my people experienced, but they were not white. And there's some historians who would agree and argue that Italians are not white. And one of the reasons they would argue that is because mm -hmm. of Italy's geographical location. Right. We started with Africa. the Greeks in Pasadena. Oh, without right. question. As well yeah. as the African presence in Italy. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. A group of Africans known as Moors actually civilized Italy. 